everyone! Happy Halloween! In today's video we are going to talk about how to read psychology textbooks. Now because I've been getting so many um, requests for such videos, I'm actually thinking about doing an entire psychology section on my channel. So if you are interested in me doing something like that, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Or if not, if you have other requests or other ideas for future videos, please leave them in the comments down below. You know I always do them. And with that being said, let's just get right into this. Um, I picked the first ever psychology textbook I ever owned. This was in my first psych class ever, so Psych 101. And this is the book right here. So I'm just going to open it to pretty much a random chapter. I just picked it at random. Sorry, I put a bookmark right there. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through the chapter with you and I'm just going to tell you what I pay attention to and how I read these textbooks. So hopefully it will help you. Now this is chapter 12, Psychological Disorders. Psychology textbooks usually start off with a little like introduction story in the beginning of each chapter. What I do is I just quickly read through it but I don't take any notes on this. After that, you have a little summary of the chapter. Again, I read this really quickly, but I don't pay too much attention to it. What I emphasize, um, what I read more slowly, I would say, and what I actually do take notes on, are bulks of text, like this, that looks really heavy. This contains a lot of crucial information for exams, so I pay much more attention to this. A lot of people say, Anna, this looks like a lot of stuff. I don't even know how to separate all of this, how to chunk this and where to begin, really. In psychology textbooks, they try to help you out. It's really just up to you to pay attention. They separate um, important topics. They chunk them up for you, so all you have to do is spot them. So in this example right here, let me see if I can find a way to section all of this text. Right away my eye goes to the bullet points. And I don't know if you can tell, but if I move closer, look at this. You see the little titles just appearing that are like indented? Abnormality as the inability to function effectively. These are your chunks. The book did it for you. There they are, right in front of you. So all you have to do is summarize and split them all in the chunks that the book gave you. So that's one way. Definitely when you see big chunks of information like this, pay close attention to the details. Psychology textbooks, like I said, are very helpful. You just have to, you know, zoom in with the camera like I just did. Moving on, we are getting to more complicated stuff like graphs, tables, little side stories. These sometimes are important. Me personally, I say use one phrase, two phrases maximum to describe the story here. Sorry, I just lost a bit of focus. But basically, don't write down all of this. This is just a side note and it can be very, very abrupt. What I do is I just read the text all the way until it's finished, like let's say right here, and then I read the story. Because if you stop reading and then you read this, it's gonna mix you up, you're gonna lose the flow of it, and you're not gonna understand what was said, and that's the time when I personally zone out and I'm like, what did I just read? I don't remember a thing. So leave the little story boxes for when you finished the flow of the text. It's gonna help you. That's a little tip I have. Another thing are tables. A lot of you has been asking me, but Anna, do I write down all the table? What do I do? They're confusing, they have a lot of information, and I do agree. Tables and graphs usually have a lot of crucial information, but what they are, actually, they're like a summary or, of, or a, a chunk of all the relevant information you've just read. So, basically, if you want to read everything and then just make your own table or what I do is I take a picture of it or you can scan it and just at the end when you have to study you have a few pages of scanned tables with you so you can study them don't worry but do not please it's gonna be torturous for you do not copy the tables just see how they organize the information and get inspired by how they did it a way to know if the table is crucial and important for your exam is this information 
is it also in the text? If it's not, it means you just have to know the gist of this table. They won't go into details. If the information in the table is the same or pretty close to what the text is saying, if it repeats it, you need to know it. You need to know the table, copy it, not by hand, I mean like take a picture or scan it, but definitely it's important. Moving on, what I like to emphasize a lot are these little babies right here. See this at the side? You know when I say keywords and everyone asks me, Anna, what do you mean by keywords? This is exactly what I mean. See those in purple? You need to know those. And they're in the text and the book just summarizes them. I know this might seem like a lot, but I always write these down in my textbook notes afterwards. These babies are the bulk of psychology exams. You have to know these terms. A way to save time though is, let's say you read here cognitive perspective and you know what it means from like a previous class or you just blatantly know what, what it means. Don't write it down. Don't write information that you already know or that you've learned from another class and you're familiar with. It saves you time and trust yourself. If you know it, you won't forget it. It's like riding a bike. Psychology is like riding a bike. You never really forget it type of thing. Another thing you can find in psychology textbooks are little quizzes or little like questions. You can test yourself on the material. Me personally, I don't really like them just because I do my own practice tests after. However, I do notice that some teachers actually take word per word the questions in the textbook. So definitely take a look at them. If you have time, do them. When people ask me, yeah Anna, what about graphs? Do I need to copy the whole graph in my notes? No, you don't. Graphs are kind of like a representation of a point. The graphs are trying to make a point. So just take, I would say, the biggest and the lowest number or the biggest variable, the biggest result and the lowest one. So just take out the important or the underlying message of the graphs and the uh, pie chart. So what is this graph trying to tell me? That severe depression and suicide attempt grew throughout the years, let's say. Or this pie chart is really just trying to tell me, look, distribution of direct costs for mental health care in Canada. So the majority is hospitals, 71. 0.9% uh, and the least one is research. No, you don't need to know the numbers unless again the teacher is very mean or it's if it's a more advanced psycholog psychology class. But overall what I do when I see graphs and stuff like this is I always take the biggest result and the smallest one. That's what the teacher usually asks. So what percentage of the population, that's not very common but what is the highest rate, what is the lowest rate found, that's normally what they ask. So with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you want me to do more psych related videos or go even more into detail, please let me know. I will try my hardest to do so for you and to make it clearer or go slower. Whatever adjustments you want me to make, just let me know. It would be my pleasure. I love feedback and I absolutely love hearing from you guys. So with that being said, please don't forget to subscribe to me if you like what you see. And once again, happy Halloween, guys. Bye.